Hey guys, it's Robin, R Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what I've been working on in the craft room this week. A huge thank you to everyone who hung out with me on the past live stream from Saturday where we worked on the Hexy Star ornaments, tried different fabrics just to see how everything would look. I like the way they look on the back just as much as on the front. We went with regular fabric, Christmas fabric, striped fabric, fun and crazy funky fabric. Just a little reminder to everyone that the live streams right now are more of a the craft and chat live streams where we're going to work on a project together or I'm going to work on a project and you're just going to hang out and chitter chatter in the comment section or you're going to just listen in the background while doing some other chore or something. It's not necessarily always going to be like a tutorial video. And this past Saturday, the example is, is I put a link in the description box for this previous tutorial video that I did a couple years ago. My plan is to go through and redo some of the older videos, cut back a little bit on the chatter that doesn't involve the actual tutorial and cut them down from like a half hour down to a 10 minute video or something like that. Mostly for those that are looking for a super fast tutorial and also just to update some of the older videos. But during the live streams, I'm going to cut off in the middle of what I'm trying to say. If you guys are asking a question or you say something really interesting or funny, I'm going to stop what I'm saying. I'm going to interact with those that are in the comment section and then I'm going to get back to what I was doing. And I've always felt that that is kind of how lives go so that you have that, that back and forth interaction with everybody. But if that's not the type of live stream you're looking for, then maybe my live streams aren't what you're looking for. But I had a lot of fun, and I know several of you had a lot of fun. And I've talked to people who come back and watch the replay. Thank goodness for replays. I know I miss out on a lot of live streams, mostly due to my internet. They don't really handle live streams all that well. But sometimes it's just a timing thing that I just can't be there for the live stream. So I do get a lot of comments from the replay also, so that's wonderful. Speaking of tutorials, last Friday's tutorial is we did the quilt as you go house block. I had a request for that video. I love requested videos. It kind of stretches me outside of my box and I do a little bit of research, learn something new. Very seldom do you guys ask for something I already know how to do. You always want to have something that's just a little bit outside of my reach or something that I've just never tried before. I've made house blocks, I've made quilt as you go blocks, but I never made a quilt as you go house block. And I couldn't find any online either using those words, quilt as you go house block. But it was fun. I made my three different variations. I do like your basic house for an applique version. And then this little house, and I thought this would be really fun to just change up your house and your fabrics for the different holidays. If you want to have an all Halloween one, or if you want to go with lighter colors for Easter, there's just so many options with this block. Or you can just use one alone, and we discussed in the video about doing a whole bunch of additional quilting, do a little bit of top stitch quilting on it, or do some hand embroidery, add some beadwork. You can really turn this into a little art quilt wall hanging or just make a little zipper pouch. Over on my Patreon group, and it's linked down below in the description box if you like to go and take a little gander of what's going on over there. I've started on this, just this past Sunday, doing the Mondo bag. Now, they say it's easy, fast, and smart. Now, I think it's smart, and I think it's, once you figure out how to put it together, it's easy, but I don't really think it's fast. That's a whole bunch of two and a half inch squares. This bag is supposed to be 17 inches here, and then the bottom is a 10 inch bottom. That's a pretty big bag. As I mentioned, I'm doing it with my patrons and we're doing a little bit each week, just taking it step by step to figure it out. And actually, I think if you wanted to come over and join us and follow along, it's anyone from the $5 and up tier gets to see a video every Sunday, whether it's a tutorial or a just sit and chat, whatever I happen to think about that I want to just share with everyone that week. I just thought it'd be fun to work on this bag because you do it on a printed gridded interfacing that came with this little pattern kit thing. There's a couple other versions. Now let me just show you my version. 
I don't know where I put the papers for, I'm using charm packs, so two of the same charm pack. I don't know where I put the little sleeve with the name of it, so I'm gonna have to go back and watch my Patreon video, and I'll just put it down here on what fabric line I'm using. But I am working on the panels. It takes four panels. They said it's done on that gridded interfacing where after you put your two and a half squares, two and a half inch squares down, you fuse it and then you sew it like this. I had a video for that previously. The benefit of the gridded interfacing like this is just so that you're gonna get all of your seams to line up perfectly. Now, based on the charm pack that I use, or the two charm packs, I should say, and the fabrics that were in it, and the fact that I was cutting my five inch squares into two and a half inch squares, which gave me four for each, that meant that for each fabric that I cut each charm, I could put one in each of the four panels. So all of them have the same exact fabric in it. I just kind of put them down in different places. I want to be really careful because you can either have the bottom of your bag here at this side or you can have your handle coming out. So I want to see if I can be really careful and make it so my handle comes out right here so I can show off that pretty butterfly. So I have panel number one. Panel number two. Now today when I'm done with this video, I will go ahead and start sewing these together. three and I think this fabric line is gorgeous it has just a nice light pink with a butterfly there and then you have some greens now this I'm not a super fan of this fabric but I love these darker fuchsia pinky purple like this one here that color is just gorgeous and I like the way the green just sets off against it. I don't even mind the different flowers on it because it's not super flowery on the big ones. I'm just not really a big fan of this one that has like a grid on it. I think this would be really striking just to use that one fabric in a tote bag. That would be a really gorgeous bag to have. But I've used up everything in the charm pack except for the creams that came with it. It did have a few creams. So I just pulled those out because I wanted more of these really rich, vibrant colors. And even though like these are still a little bit pale, they still really kind of pop out against everything else. And for the lining on this, I'm going to find a butterfly fabric in my stash so that it pulls the butterflies through the entire project. And the reason I don't think that that project is a fast one is because you, I, well, I had to cut all of my squares into two and a half, all of my charms into two and a half squares. They say you can use like jelly roll strips or two and a half inch strips, which you would still have to cut down, pressing them onto the interface thing, then sewing them, clipping all the little intersections, sewing in the other direction. I think that's not fast. You can easily do this without the interfacing and just sew all of your two and a half inch squares together. Or you can use, even on the fusible gridded interfacing, you can use the charm square on it. But I really like the look of the smaller squares versus the one big one. Of course, I worked on another tote this weekend. I actually started this on Saturday morning and I believe I showed you a few of the blocks. I wasn't sure how my, my layout was going to be when we went live on Saturday. I finished this up Sunday night. I'm so excited, I actually remembered to add my little tag there. As you can see, I used blue fabric for my scrap bin, which is still totally overflowing. I did not put a dent in it whatsoever. And then I used just random selvages on it. So on this side, I made the center to be the selvage. So that's what you were gonna draw your eye to. And that was your main thing. And then I just had some of the little partials on the side. But when you flip it over this way, I went with the blue in the center here and I have your eye going up to those salvages at the top where on this side, it's just a different layout. You don't get the, you don't have the blues going together because they're down here, where on this side. So it's just interesting that you're doing half square triangles. I did these a little bit different than I normally would because I was using the salvages. So they're not actually half square triangles that are sewn together. This is more of a layering thing that I did. And I put in 
that is a really fun fabric it almost has like because of the light colors in the blue i feel like it has a sparkle to it but there's no sparkle it's just the way the waves are yep i just used that once i put a blue bottom on it because i still have threads all over it I didn't want to have the salvages going around to the bottom because when you're doing salvages, many of the times you're just stitching them down so you do have a raw edge. This part doesn't fray. Some of them already have the fray to them like these. And I really didn't want to put that on the bottom due to wear and tear issues. So it just has a nice little blue bottom. I also went ahead and did the two handles. I did one and just one fabric that is in this bag over here so I used this fabric so I have that one handle and then I thought for a little quirkiness I went ahead and just did a scrappy handle on that side let's see if you can see it a little bit better these bags I need to start I was telling myself last night Robin you need to start making some smaller bags you've made some big ones now so we need to start making some smaller ones because this one is about 16 and a half inches when it's across the top like that if you measure it the way I measure the bags for my listing is I go from corner to corner. And so that the bottom of the bag measures almost 12 inches. And the same thing I measure from the corner to the top of the bag. And that is a little bit over 13. So it's just shy of 12 inches this way and just past 13 inches this way. But I did try the two different fabrics for the lining. Now this is from a fat quarter bundle, so they technically go together. So I have this, and then you got that. And what I'm really excited for is, I put a zipper pocket in, guys. My very first zipper pocket inside of a bag. I put a darker blue in. I know that you don't really want to have dark fabrics so you can find what's in the bag, but I thought in a little inside pocket like that, having a peek out would have been good. Now that I'm thinking about it, I should have used the yellow so that when you open it up, you get a little peek of yellow to match all that. But I think it's fine with a blue bag. As my very first zipper, I am, I am pleased with it. I did have a couple little issues and I think I'll change a couple little ways that it was done. I'm gonna put a link down below to Professor Pincushion video that I used. Professor Pincushion is like my favorite. She just has, you can see all the steps. She tells you all the steps. I never walk away from her videos with a question. I never think, hmm, how was I supposed to do this? Or what if I want it smaller or larger? So I never walk away with those questions because she always answers them. So she shows how to do it and then she tells you also the formula so that you can change it up a little bit. This is that really simple thing where you just have that opening that you create in your lining and then there's a piece of fabric that's in the back one large piece that you kind of fold in half so there's a down at the bottom there's no seam in this pocket it's just a folded piece like this. Now for this one that works out perfect, I wanted to try another technique. I wanna do the thing where you can turn your bag through your pocket. And I'm gonna try that on the next one. I just got so excited that I did this that I completely forgot about it. I did sew it so that the lining is attached to the bottom so that you can't pull the lining out. It's all attached in there nicely. So I really do like that technique and I will probably be using that in most likely, I would say 99% if not all of my totes. I do kind of like the funkiness of the bag. So it depends on where you wear it. If you put it over your shoulder, you could see this side or if you want access to your pocket, you can easily see it there. I think that the pocket is in a, I think it's in an okay place. I did put it three inches down like I would if it was just one of the little slip-in pockets like I showed you. Yes, we will do one of these little zipper pockets in a later tutorial. I just wanna make a few more just to get my comfort level so that I'm not having to go back and watch the video and check it out and make sure I'm doing everything right. As I said, there's just one or two little things I wanna change up just to make it a little bit nicer for me. 
I am using a nylon zipper, so you can use a large zipper and cut it back. Professor Pincushion used her zipper and then built her, po her pocket around it. And I, I'm gonna go and do it in the opposite direction. So there's a couple little tips and tricks that I can change up to just clear up a couple little things that I'm not super happy with. It's perfectly fine. It's pocket like anyone else has made it zipper pocket i just since i do use something different i'm not using a metal zipper or anything like that i have a couple options available to myself there you go i think the blues are really nice like that and the salvages are fun that definitely screams quilter to me get that one big eyeball like coming out at you nice blue bottom so if anyone's interested, this is going to go into the shop. It should be listed before you see this video. So if you follow me on Instagram, I will have already put up, as soon as I put this in the shop, I go onto Instagram and pop my pictures in and say, okay, if anyone's interested, it's in the shop. And I've also been adding it to the community tab here on YouTube. I don't know, there's certain places you can see the community tab and certain devices that you can't. I know I can see it on my phone. I have other people's that I follow, their community tabs pop up. And I'm only saying there's certain things because I've heard other channels say, like maybe you can't see it on a computer, but you can see it on a to-go device or something. You guys will know. If you go to my little, you go to my channel, go to my homepage of YouTube here, and if you just kind of slide over, there's the videos and the playlist and things like that, then there's a community tab. If you're subscribed and you've rung the little bell, whenever I put up a community tab post, it should pop up in your feed as if, like if I had a video or something like that. I love having my own little label there. get a good shot of it here it's nice and shiny I like the font I chose I think it really goes great with my videos I keep forgetting to put them in my bag because I haven't had them in so long so I went ahead and I had this little container you can buy these at Dollar Tree they come in a stack of three they have a really nice seal to it so you could put like if you wanted to put little snacks or something to go into a lunchbox for the kids or for yourself M&Ms come to mind, but you can also put like blueberries or strawberries or something in it. I keep thumbtacks in mine. I have thumbtacks and those black binder clips, those metal clips like. So I had an extra one and I decided to, I just put my labels in here. They sit in there nicely. And this way I can keep it on my table and hopefully I won't forget to put them in my bags. Oh, and the quilting on this one, I just went ahead because you have to sew down on the salvages right along the edge, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch from the edge. So what I decided to do since I was doing that is I just went in a square, then went to the next one. All the salvages don't line up, so the quilting isn't perfect in those. And then I did the same thing. You can see it here. And I used a uh, blue thread just because, you know, it's a blue bag, so why not use some blue thread? So now I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and do a bag in each color, but I'm not gonna do salvages for them all and I want them all to look a little bit different. So I'm looking over at my bins right now and I have options. I have all the rainbow colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, gray, black, polka dot, white, rainbow and beyond. So if you wanna go ahead and make a suggestion, go ahead and let me know down in the comments what color you think I should make my next bag out of. Now, I did piece this together, so technically it can be called a Franken tote, but I didn't use like leftover blocks or anything. I just used leftover fabric and the salvages that you guys shared with me. As soon as I saw this one, I said this one had to go in because it is blue. And as you can see, I didn't care which ones were right side up, which ones were upside down. And I did have these come here and match all the way together because I was making two blocks at a time when I was making them. You know what? And I thought that's just perfect. I am going to actually let that stay because I like how that looks. So the next bag, the next bag I make, I will be choosing the color because I'll probably start working on it this afternoon and today is Monday. But for you guys, you can tell me the bag after that. Just choose any color you want. I, you guys know pretty much I just said what colors I have. So I have all your basic rainbows and then brown, 
black polka dot and gray and white just let me know and I will go ahead and make a bag in those colors on my next one what is that thing that you make in church camp where you have the two wooden sticks and you weave yarn around it it's some type of an eye I don't remember what that's called I think because that reminds me of an eye looking at me, that we'll just go ahead and let that be our code word, E-Y-E. -E. Thanks for hanging out with me. Don't forget to check down below for the Professor Pincushion video for anyone who wants to see how easy it is to put a zipper into whether you can put it into clothing or any type of bag. It'll work on the outside of the bag, on the lining. It's the same technique for all of those. So go ahead and check that out. I'll see you guys on Friday. Bye.